So, you think you're the hero of Moga Village? You've conquered every single mission that the Hunter's Guild has sent to you, with one exception, Mark of a Hero. Defeat an Ivory Legiacris, a Bracadios, and an Azure Rathbos, all within 50 short minutes in the Land Arena. Well, fear not, fellow hunters, for I've come with some tips and tricks that will help you conquer Mark of a Hero. Keep in mind, these tips will vary depending on who you ask, and they're simply what has worked for me. It totally depends on your playstyle, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Just some basic information about the mission. Mark of a Hero begins with a single Ivory Legiacris. Once that dies, a Bracadios and an Azor Rathalos will appear. This is the hardest part of the fight, at least for it, for me it is, because you have to fight both of them at the same time and they do crazy amounts of damage. This is because they're both G-rank strength, but high rank health, at least that's what I uh, have come across. Because of this, I highly recommend you are equipped in full G-rank armor, because wearing anything less will just make the entire mission just so much more difficult. First things first, you're definitely going to want several things for this mission. One, an awesome weapon so you can take down the monsters within the time limit. Two, armor skills that suit your playstyle. Three, a full inventory full of items that will keep breathing. And four, tactics. You need to know how to fight these monsters, and you need to be familiar with their attacks. Simply put, you need to know your enemy. One of the most important things to keep in mind when choosing a weapon is your mobility. The Ivory Legiacris isn't too tough, all things considered, because it's a 1v1 fight, but mobility is an important factor for the second half of the fight. Some of the slower weapons, such as lances and greatswords, will limit your mobility due to their slow attack speeds. If you can work around this, great, but it will definitely leave you open to more attacks if you're not ready to block. However, if you choose something like a sword and shield, you'll be able to run circles around the monsters, but your damage output will be minimal. As you may know, I usually play with dual blades because it's a fast weapon, it allows me to jump in, get a few hits in, and roll out of the way before the monster can even attack. The downside of this is you can't block and the range is quite small. Some other weapons, like Longsword on the other hand, have a long range and higher damage and offer a modicum of speed. It really just depends on what you actually prefer. In terms of an element, none of the monsters really share a major weakness. Ivory and Azure are both weak to Dragon, but Brachydeus not so much. If you want to overlook the Bracky, then that might be okay. For this reason, I prefer to use Slime, though, because the explosions caused by Slime are awesome at knocking monsters down. Even though Brachydeus has more of a Slime tolerance, it still knocks them down, which is always helpful. If you don't own a dragon or a slime weapon, status weapons are always a possibility. Paralyze is always helpful, as is poison for the extra damage over time, but I would imagine sleep would not work so well due to the shakalakas and the other monsters hitting them and waking up the monsters. Having an armor set with decent skills is nearly essential for this quest. Keep in mind the monsters in Mark of the Hero have G rank strength, so they will do a ton of damage, especially if you're in high rank gear. Fighting both the Azure Rathalos and the Bracadios will have you constantly on the run, so anything that saves you time is important. As always, I highly recommend Evasion Plus 2 and Evade Distance for survivability. Speed Sharpening will save you if your weapon does not have a lot of sharpness. Those are helpful for really any fight. If you're having trouble specifically with Mark of a Hero, I'd recommend using Sneak so the monsters will attack the Shakalakas more, and even something like Team Leader will boost their survivability so they won't die so often. If you're using a slower weapon, like a greatsword, sheathing will let you pull out and put your weapon away very quickly, allowing you to run even faster. Crit draw goes along with sheathing and is useful for nearly every weapon. Brachydeus always seems to enrage nearly every minute or two, so I'd recommend earplugs for that. Another skill that might help a lot is stamina, which will slow down stamina depletion so you can run for much longer. However, you can just use a Mega Dash Juice for a similar effect. That being said, I typically stick with the Wrath Soul Armor for Mark of a Hero because it gives me a huge boost to my damage. If I were to use another monster set, say one for survivability, I would use the Nargakuga because it has Evasion plus 2, Evade Distance, and Sense. With the remaining slots in Talisman, I jam in Earplugs and, if possible, Sharpener. This theoretical set will give a huge boost to survivability as opposed to going all out offensive. What you bring in your backpack will determine if you can survive the entire fight in case something goes wrong. You'll definitely want to bring everything you can, including max potions, mega potions, antidotes for Azure Rathalos' grab attack, mega dash juice, mega demon drug, blood on stakes, traps, trank bombs, life crystals, flash bombs, and tansia chips. Keep in mind, there is an item chest 
in the base camp that has several things in it that might be useful, such as rations and potions. A Farcaster can get you back to the base camp in case you're running into trouble and you're out of items. Also, don't forget there are several life powders in the center of the arena that you can gather. Carving monsters will also give you mega potions. You should bring enough herbs, blue mushrooms, and honey to make more potions and mega potions should you run out. Now, all the way up until this point has been all about prepping for battle and, you know, the kind of equipment that you should be using and bringing into the fight, but jumping into the fight without knowing what you're up against is honestly just a death trap. So, as I said before, the Ivory Legiacris isn't too much of a surprise, really. Uh, it's just you and your Shakalakas against the Ivory Legiacris, so it honestly shouldn't be too difficult. You just have to watch out for his attacks and try not to get hit. Uh, there is no water, so you don't have to worry about underwater combat at all. The trickiest part, really, is just trying to avoid Ivory's lightning attacks. They hit hard, and they're very hard to predict. So what I like to try and do is run in, and right after he does an attack, uh, get a quick swipe or two in, and then roll away until I know he's not doing one of his AoEs and just keep uh, kind of doing this tactic, this hit and run tactic over and over again. Keep pounding away at him and eventually he'll kind of drop and uh, just carve him as soon as you possibly can. Uh, those That'll give you mega potions and also it, this will be a good time to get those light powders in the middle of the arena as well. Now when the Brachydeus and the Azure Rathalos come out, things can get out of hand very quickly, especially if your Shakas are dead. But let's take a look at our priorities. Number one, we have to stay alive. And number two, we have to down the monster. Or at least one of the monsters. So your best bet is to just pick one monster and focus all of your attacks on that one so it dies first. I prefer to kill the Azure Rathalos first because I'd rather fight the Brachydeus one on one. And uh, also the Brachydeus moveset works very well for taking out the Wrath. Now luckily the monsters can damage each other and that will work to our benefit. I find that the best strategy really is to just kind of a hit-and-run approach, as I said, for the Ivory of the Geochrist. Uh, say I'm trying to down the Azure Rathalos first, I want to try and get as much free damage as possible. So if both the Brachy and the Rathalos are coming at me, I'll try to lead the Brachy into the Rathalos when he attacks. Uh, for example, the Jump Smash from Brachy works wonders on the Rathalos, and his Horn Charge also works really well too. Uh, if you're just running away, try to keep running in a constant direction, like counterclockwise or clockwise, so that the monsters will end up hitting each other over time. I always have a problem with the Brachydeos kind of enraging every minute or two, and you might have that issue as well. Uh, as you may know, Brachy becomes a hell of a lot quicker when he's enraged, and he's much more aggressive. You might not have a lot of time to actually attack when he's in this stage, so it's probably safer to just keep running. And this is where your Mega Dash Juice will come in handy, or if you are able to gem in Marathon Runner. Just make sure you don't run into the Wrath's attack, or else you might get knocked down, you might get cornered or dazed, and if that happens, you will take a lot of damage. Uh, make sure you take advantage of the rolling and diving, especially if you have evade distance. Uh, don't throw yourself into the fray just for an extra hit, because it's probably more important to keep your Mega Potions, uh, so that way you don't run out in the future. Also, watch out for Bracky Slime. If you get slimed, get it off you ASAP, or else the explosion will throw you down, and then you might get ganged up on and maybe two-shot. Uh, as always, keep your health up and strike when you're positive you won't get blindsided. Your Shakas are also great at keeping aggro and giving you a moment to breathe, so make sure you take advantage of them, and when they die, you should probably play a little bit more conservatively until they come back. Although it might take a while, eventually one of the mobs will go down, and you only have to kill one monster. At this point, it's just a matter of time before the quest is over and you've completed it, but if you die, make sure you boost your health back up to max with your max potion or your nutrients. Uh, don't forget to carve all the monsters for the mega potions and let the Bracky and the Wrath beat up on each other as much as possible. And that about sums it up for some tips and tricks in Mark of a Hero. If you have any other tips for Mark of a Hero, or you'd like additional help, just please leave a comment down below, and we'll be sure to take care of you. I hope this was helpful in some way, and please remember to adjust your strategy and equipment to suit your playstyle. Uh, what I've gone through here was just uh, my own personal uh, kind of tips and tricks for myself, but I figured that they might be helpful to you. Um, if you aren't already, I'd appreciate it if you could tap that subscribe button right there and follow me on Twitter and Twitch. The links for those are in the description. And with that, uh, good luck on your endeavors in Mark of a Hero.